Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and welcome to my new series where I'm turning this old shed into my new workshop. We've got a fun episode with a lot happening, so let's go ahead and get started on Modern Builds. I really like the rustic desert look that this plywood has, but I don't want it to get worse. I feel like with five or 10 more years of sun, this plywood would take so much UV damage that it would have to be replaced. I've already taken the time to clean up the old shingles that were on the roof, as well as all of this concrete overspill that happened when Brett and I poured the pad in episode one. I was just breaking this concrete into smaller pieces when this happened. Boom. <laughs> okay, so that hurt, but it could have been worse. Here's a replay, three, two, one. Oh my gosh. All right, let's get back to it. There's not much on here that needs masked off, but this morning I did cover up the polycarbonate windows. For those who don't know, Wagner is a sponsor of mine, and today we're gonna be breaking out the Control Pro 150. This is the same airless sprayer that I used to prime and paint the inside of the shed white. It did great on that job, so I'm gonna be using it again. I'm interested in finding out how it performs doing a waterproof wood finish rather than paint, since that's the only thing I've sprayed with this so far. One thing that I really like about using this sprayer is that it pulls directly from a one gallon or five gallon bucket. And since I'm gonna be going through quite a bit of this finish, I was able to combine multiple cans into one bucket and stir it all up. That way the color is more consistent. Right away, I was happy with the color and the contrast that we were getting out of this plywood. But before we talk about that too much, I'd like to go over Mike's beginner sprayer tips. First, keep your sprayer square to whatever you're spraying. Second, spray from eight to 12 inches away. Three, overlap each of your passes by about half, just in case you miss anything. And four, always, always stop your sprayer before starting the next pass. That way you don't get buildup on the ends of each of your runs. Those were my four tips from episode two of this series where we primed and painted the inside of this shed white. But today I would like to introduce rule number five, which is double check your sprayer pressure. So by now you've probably noticed the horizontal lines that I'm getting in my finish. Now this really shows through on camera even a little bit more than it did in real life. Otherwise I probably would have taken this problem a little bit more seriously in the moment. At the time, I thought this striping effect was something that just came with spraying a semi-transparent finish, but what I realize now, it was because I was spraying with too low of pressure. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more later on, but always remember rule number five to just make sure your sprayer pressure is correct. By the time I had made it around three walls, I had run through the first four gallons of finish that I had used, so I loaded up four more gallons, and that got me around this final wall and did the entire second coat on the shed. And for the safety police out there, I should point out I ought to be wearing a respirator, even though I'm outside, anytime I'm spraying any paint or finish on, it's what I ought to do. The second coat went on really well. You can really see the striping that was happening, but it was a lot of rinse and repeat. So I think this is where we're gonna leave off. All right, so really quickly, let's debrief on how spraying this finish on the exterior of the shed worked out. First, I would say coverage was great with two coats. I would definitely do more than one if you're spraying this finish. Number two, the color is fantastic. I'll be honest, I was a little bit bummed out when I realized the finish had tint to it, but it brought out so much more color and depth out of the wood that I thought was faded out to gray, so I really, really am happy that I used it. And the third quality that I would highlight is the general feel of the wood now. Before, this this was really splintery, it had a lot of fuzzies on it, but now all of that is locked in and you can run your hand across it without getting pricked by anything. As I was spraying, especially on the second coat, you could see the lines on the top and the bottom of my spray pattern, and that's called striping or tailing. In hindsight, I know now that I should have turned the pump up on my sprayer, and that would have fixed my problem. Thankfully, all of that striping and tailing blended out when the second coat cured. I'm sure there's a couple spots that you could see it a little bit, but to the person who is unaware that that happened, they would never suspect anything. So great learning experience again on the shed before I go spraying the interior and the exterior of the new house. And right now I'd like to take a minute to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. 
If you need a website, a custom domain, or an online store, Squarespace is your one-stop shop. Squarespace's huge library of designer templates look incredible right out of the gate, and they are really easy to customize. All you have to do is drag text and image blocks and upload the files that you want. Squarespace sites are designed to look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile, no matter where customers find you. Plus, there are no limits to the number of items that you can sell on a Squarespace site. So if you want to learn more, make sure and go to squarespace.com forward slash modern builds. The link is in my description. There, you can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your new site live, don't forget to use the code modern builds for 10% off your first site or domain. Once again, that's squarespace.com slash modern builds, and the code is modern builds for 10% off your first website, online store, or domain through Squarespace. It's what I use, and it's what you should use too. Now back to the build. Even though we've applied finish to the exterior of the shed, the exterior of the shed was a long way from being finished. I went by my local concrete and gravel yard and I picked up one yard of three quarter inch crushed gravel. This is the most common driveway mix you can get. It looks good, it's nice to walk on, and it packs well for driving. Not to mention, the one yard that it took to fill my truck bed only cost 20 bucks, so you can't beat it. I just used a rake to even everything out, and as you can see, my driveway leading up to the shed has a little bit of a curve to it, so I just did my best to match that with the perimeter of the gravel I put down. And while I was in landscape mode, I grabbed a rake and a hoe and I started cleaning up the side yard next to the shed. As this shot zooms out, you'll see there's a natural perimeter that I was cleaning up around. Now, I'm not from the desert. I'm used to mowing a lawn or raking up leaves to clean things up, but it was really relaxing just using a rake and getting all of those twigs and dry grass out of the way, being left with a cool little zen garden. The overspray on the door really shows how much pigment was in this finish. It made the wood look great, but I want to paint this door a nice earth tone so it blends into this environment better. Throughout today's video, you've been seeing me wear my plug phones. These are my hearing protection and Bluetooth earbuds in one. Plug phones are comfortable, they sound great, and they are loud. I normally only have the volume on three or four out of 10 while I'm working. Not to mention, plug phones have an extra long battery life. That way you can wear them all day building or in the shop. If you're interested in learning more, make sure and follow the link down in my description to plugphones.com and make sure and use the code MODERNBUILDS for 15% off your purchase. Thanks, plug phones. So I am happy to report that the final polycarbonate panel has been delivered so we can finish up this row of windows along the east wall. Just like before, I cut this with a circular saw, but this time I didn't use any masking tape and I still got really clean cuts with a high tooth count blade. Then I ran a thick bead of silicone sealant everywhere that this polycarbonate meets wood. I used the same screws for the polycarbonate panels as well as the corrugated sheet metal roof. They're the ones that are self-tapping and they've got a rubber washer on them to make them weather tight. And speaking of making things weather tight, I added a few more trim boards everywhere that I had exposed seams, especially around this polycarbonate. I kept track of most of the original trim boards, but did have to throw in some new boards along with everything else. But for the most part, I was able to preserve the original look, which is awesome. So I'm gonna let this play and the music run. I just attached the original trim boards and applied a coat of finish to everything that I just threw on. So I kept all of the wood that I tore off the shed, and these are where the polycarbonate windows are now. They're super rustic, half inch or quarter inch plywood, and I think I'm gonna try and see and see a sign. This same day, my friend Rachel Metz was also borrowing Ben Ueda's CNC, so we both did our panel glue ups real quick. I used spring clamps and a lot of glue, considering how rustic this wood was, and it worked out great. I just threw a couple 25 pound weights in the center of the board to help hold that down as well. So this is Ben's new CNC. It's the Invenables X-Carve Pro. It's got a larger bed and way more heavy duty components than previous models. And after I secured it down and we calibrated the machine and loaded the file, 
it was time to let it run. And honestly, this just worked really well. The center of a couple of letters did pop out, but I was watching the machine as it ran, so I was able to grab them and throw them in my pocket. That way I could reattach them later on. I wanted the design for this sign to be simple, just like the name. It's kind of inspired by those National Park Trail signs that you see, and I actually found a font supplied by the Park Service for free online if you want to check it out. I'll leave a link down in the description. Here it is. That looks really good. That's gonna clean up really nicely. And now it's time to fix my S and my D. And to do that, I'm gonna be using some Loctite Power Grab. This stuff is really great. I've been using it more and more recently. All you have to do is hold whatever you're adhering in place for like 10 seconds, then it grabs and everything can cure properly. I really wasn't worried about all this squeeze out. I was able to use a razor blade and it cut away from the wood perfectly. Yeah, that's clean. All right, next we put on finish. I applied this way too thick. You can see how much the finish built up in the letters and grooves, but I was able to work the majority of it out by dry brushing it and spreading that finish on the rest of the wood. Once I centered the sign on the shed, I put in one screw and grabbed the level to make sure it was level to the earth. Then I stepped back and made sure it still looked good on the shed. And after doing a little baby adjustment, I was able to lock it down in place. And with that, the exterior of this shed is done. We're gonna have to travel back to episode one for the befores on this shed. As you remember, the exterior was in rough condition and we caused a lot of destruction. But throughout this series, we've built it back and let's check out these afters. Right now, I'd like to do something that I typically don't on this channel, which is address the haters. I had a lot of people commenting on previous videos that I needed to take down this exterior plywood and replace it with something new. But I think we can all agree here today that that was not the right move. The rustic charm and the unbuyable quality that this shed has is awesome. And I'm so happy that I was able to preserve this look. The plywood on the west facing wall is in the worst condition, but I was still able to bring a little bit of color out of it, and I could not be more excited with how this shed looks now. So as always, thanks a ton for watching, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That way you can stay up with me in between YouTube videos. Also, be sure to click that subscribe and notification bell down below so you stay updated when I post videos. And we will see you in episode five in the Shed to Shop series. Bye, everybody. <laughs>